Be there in a minute. Is this working? Hmm. All right, check. All right, check. All right. Seems to be working now. All right, give me one second. So, uh, I have it on the stand right now, but let me just... There's the stand. There's the hammer. Let me just put it here so you can see it while I fix some of the cabling. So, we basically did the wooden structure of the hurdy-gurdy yesterday, but now we need to string it up and get it to make some music, which I'll attempt in. After we string it, we still need to tune it. An issue with that is we broke a gear yesterday. I think we can tune it without that one gear. It actually, if I can show you where that gear is, uh, I remember it was, yeah, on the headstock here. One of these pins, I broke the gear. Yep, it's this one, the gear's missing. So you can see what it was, the next gear that it was going to turn. Uh, and there's a tool that they give us. And I could just use that tool to turn that gear. So, I mean, if it's just used for tune, if the, the knobs on the headstock, I assume, are just used for tuning. So I could just stick my finger in there or a toothpick and, or a golf tee and, and I could get it tuned, you know. And then these are the gears for playing it. And then inside of here are buttons. So I think that gear was only for tuning, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. All right. So I think the only thing I still need here is this tool, which I'm saying I'm gonna use for tuning. And then I need the instruction book, which is gonna tell me how to set up the strings and then I'm going to need a wire cutter. No, that's the needle nose pliers. Maybe they'll come in handy. Uh, all right, here's the wire cutter. So we're going to string this thing up and see if we can play it. Nick, Nick, if I get this hurdy gurdy work and you'll come play it. All right, it might take me a while. All right. Looks kind of like a violin. I think a violin's a little bit bigger in length. I don't know if it's any bigger in height. It might, it might be less even. of the book here. Stringing it up. It's actually very complex, the stringing. As you can see, it goes on for page after page. It's got caution signs. It's got instructions to turn knobs. It's got instructions to cut the wire. I really like, I got to this last night. <laughs> after spending already over two hours to finish the woodworking. And I just was thinking, it's not the time to get into this stringing. If it was just tuning, if it was just like stretching them and tuning them, like adding strings to an acoustic guitar, I could do it. But we like got to see these. Uh, this is a super blow up this image, but it's like this string which is really like, you can't even see it. It's like fishing line. Here, it looks huge and you can see it going through these holes, but in reality, that's gonna be like nothing. Like, I'm not even sure what that is. Like, I see, the, I see two holes here and I did that. Those are rather big holes compared to these. These look kind of tight. I'm not even sure where those ones are. And in fact, I kind of disagree. I felt like I disagreed with the instructions because it's we tied two ends here. So by tying two ends there, that like leaves all this stuff. 
and then they show it going through these two holes here. Well, actually, there's two sets of holes, and it shows them going through the right side, each string going through the right side, but the only way that would happen is if I had put them there first before feeding them into here, which maybe I got to untie it and do that, but the order in which they showed the instructions, I wouldn't have known to do that. But maybe I'll do it. Um, what? Uh, usually you look really close and you look for like a line around your pupil. Um, you also can just, what I do is you, I put like something far away and close one eye, close the other, see if you can see it. Let me know if you need help. Look at something in the distance, close one eye and see if you can read it, then close the other. If it's in your eyelid, that's a totally different issue. Uh, okay. Um, so you definitely, you can't see with it anymore. Yeah. And you don't know where it went. Yeah. Um, did you drop it? Is there feel anything uncomfortable under your eyelid? No. All right. Um, and there were new lenses? Yeah. Um, look around for something shiny. Sometimes it looks like a drop of water. And then if it time passes and it dries out, then it looks like a crinkly, dried up <laughs> white thing. But at this point, it should look like a drop of water. I don't know. Sometimes it sticks to, falls and sticks to your shirt. Check your shirt. I don't know. Sorry. All right. So. The only way for me to get it through these holes and these holes is to untie these and start over here or to cut the, or to cut the string. But if I cut the string, I don't know where to cut it. That's the issue. But if you look at these instructions, it's like just going back to the beginning. It's like tie one and then I mean, I believe it says then times two. So it's like tie the other. So I tied both ends. I tied one end to one circle and one end to the other circle. And then here's the picture. That's what it looks like. So, and then, okay, so we did that. So we go to the next page. And then it's like, okay, feed it through these slots. It may not be in those slots at this second, but I can put them back in there. And then it's like, send it all the way down here and through these holes. This is where I have a problem. How am I going to send it through those holes without cutting it? Because the instructions don't say to cut it. But I think I have to. I mean, I, I don't see any other way. On this page, there's instructions to cut it. But that's... Let me see. Let me go back to this page. Does it say to cut it? No, it doesn't say to cut it. But, I mean, there's no other way to do it. So I feel like I got to just cut it. But then if I'm wrong and I end up with not enough string to do, to build the instrument, that's going to be a problem. I feel like I need to fully understand this before I cut anything. Down that path. Through those holes. Into the knobs on the headstock. So those are exactly those knobs uh, that we were looking at yesterday. Uh, those do not have holes. What are they talking about? It's not a big deal. You just open a new pack of lenses. It's, it's probably not. And if it was, you just blink like 10 times and it'll come out. It's, you know, I've thought that before and it's never been in my eye.
It, well, one time it was. Like one time in 30 years. Though I read about a lady going to the emergency room with like 20 contact lenses in her eye. But I only had it happen to me once that the lens was in there. And I like couldn't find it and I went to sleep and then I woke up and my eye was like shut. And it was basically the lens was like in the, at that point in the front of my eye, but like crumpled. So right now I'm just trying to find the holes of where these lines are even gonna go and I don't see them. Ah, there they are, I see them. Okay. The holes are on these gears. So forget about these little gears. I'm just gonna stick my finger in there and do those gears. Okay, so I found where the string is going at least. Yeah, they're gonna tie onto those two gears, but yeah, I definitely gotta cut those strings. Now, I just wanna, before I do it, I wanna analyze the rest of the pictures to see if there's anything more than run the two strings this way and tie them onto the gears. Because if so, I might need more string for that. It looks like all of these instructions are just saying tighten the gear, but let me keep doing. Hold on, can you give me five minutes? I gotta check on my son. What's going on? Update. My wife found the lens on the floor in the bathroom and they threw it out, which he just opened that pack of lenses yesterday. So that's like money flushed in the toilet, but whatever. Um, at least the lens was found and it wasn't in his eye. <laughs> so he was complaining about homework, not about lenses. It's basically, it has to be uploaded by 8 a.m which is better than by midnight as far as I'm concerned. You potentially could go to sleep, wake up at 6 a.m. and finish it. Uh, sometimes it's easier when you're fresh. Sometimes it's easier to start the homework at night, like kind of get rough ideas of what you want to do and then go to sleep and then wake up and finish it. And it's sometimes that's the way to go. Um, because if you start something at night and try to stick with it till it's done, it might take you like five, six hours and you don't even do a good job. But if you start something, put like 45 minutes in, go to sleep for six, seven hours, and then wake up and finish it, you sometimes end up finishing it in like another hour or two. So instead of, and you do a good job because you're fresh. So instead of having, spending five hours and doing a crappy job, you spend three hours and do a good job and you get some rest in the middle. So that's like the way to go. But often with these time limits, whether it's for work or school, they just don't allow you to do your best work. And I understand that when it's like in a sports analogy, but sometimes in work, I'm like, well, why would you not want to do it right? And I feel like real jobs do it right. That's why like, this is another thing that makes me want to side against the so-called like elites 
their jobs are all bullshit. <laughs> I mean, when someone builds like a building or a factory or someone works a farm or they raise cattle, they like doing a real job that has to be done and they take the time to do it right because they know it's important and there's no way to fake it. I feel like a lot of these like elite big city jobs, they're just like bullshit. They got artificial time limits. They got artificial regulations and laws and rules and everything is like made up bullshit and you have to study someone else's made up bullshit and pretend that you think it means something you know like tomatoes grow if you get like sun and water and like soil and like that's how tomatoes work <laughs> cryptocurrency grows if you convince some other idiot to buy the stupid thing that you bought and it's like it's so much bullshit I don't know. Cities need to get better. And they were once that, you know, they were doing textiles and they were doing um, clothing. Well, that's repetitive. Anyway, they were doing printing. They were doing writing. People used to take pride in their work. They used to do advertising that they took pride in. Nowadays, it's all just how many people can you fool? Like they really, this is what we've been reduced to. How many people can you fool? This is how you make money. This is surely a sign of a dead economy. This can't possibly be sustainable. Do some real work and your economy will be good. Of course, expect to be paid for your real work. You have every right to expect to be paid. But I feel like all the people who know how to get paid, they're all in the like bullshit sectors of the economy. They're wasting all their talents on selling bullshit. They could be selling real shit. You know, maybe that would work better. Energy is maybe one of the few areas where they mixing real product with, you know, politics and marketing and getting getting somewhere. Um, most businesses are either real product, but you're getting exploited for it or bullshit and you're becoming rich for it. And neither one of those is a good situation. I think it's dry goods, like coffee, oil, gold, like stuff that you can like store for a while seems to do well. But, you know, let's get some good minds in the, uh, the areas that involve some risk. That needs to, you know, they're important too. You know, and if it means that they need to be insured and you know then then that's what they need to be all right so i was going back into this just to make sure that i only need two lines and i'm actually growing in confidence that that's the case but on this third page of stringing there's there's tuning which is fine but there's a lot of caution signs and i'm just reading all the caution signs before i go any further this caution is just like, don't let this string go on the wood. This caution, um, I can't figure out. I think it's saying, don't let the string get trapped under a gear. Uh, it doesn't want the string to get trapped here, but that's where the string starts. Oh, they don't want it to make contact. I'm not sure what they want. They're like, the original instruction is to tie it here and to go through these grooves and to go over this wheel. But then like two and a half pages later, they have this very caution sign. Like, what are they cautioning us about? To not let these strings touch this wheel? Is that what they're saying? It, it looks a little bit like there's space there. So that's a good thing. Don't let it touch the wheel. Because I would have thought it's exactly supposed to touch the wheel. Um, and then this last one, it's like, this is bad, this is good. And I can't tell what they're trying to say. All right, this one is higher than this. And this one is lower. So it has to be higher. How is it going to get higher if it's in that groove? Let's just test our theory. 
I mean, I'm not like installing it. I'm just kind of testing how it would, would it theoretically work. Well, the only way it would work is if you don't put it in the groove, but it is gonna fall in the groove. Or am I supposed to tighten it so that it gets out of the groove? Oh, there's another one up here. No, that thing is gonna fall in that groove. I don't see how that's avoidable. I don't get it. In this picture, the strings are in the grooves and they're touching this wheel. In this picture, it's saying green is right, red is bad. And the only difference is that red is that green is above this and red is below. But right here, they're both clearly below. Look how low that one is. It's way down in that groove. But yet on this picture, it's like, you better be above this or you're wrong. You know what? I'm not gonna sweat these pictures. The only thing I want needed to confirm is that I only need two lengths of string because then I can cut it. So I'm gonna cut the string right down the middle, right in half. I assume that's the way it's gotta be done. And then I'm gonna string it up. And if it doesn't play, and I'm gonna figure out what's wrong with it. <laughs> but I'm not gonna try to figure it out in advance. All I really need to know at this stage is can I cut the string? And I'm pretty sure I can. And then the second question is where to cut it? And I think the answer is down the middle should be close enough. It may not be perfectly accurate, but it should get the job done. Here's a problem. The string is caught in the headstock. I can't move forward until I get that untangled. Wow, that is really tangled. They have all these like curvy pieces of wood. All right, I got it out. I think I got it out. I got one portion out. All right, there were two portions caught in there. All right, now I'm gonna stretch the string out. I'm gonna be off camera for a second because I gotta stretch it as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to cut it right at the midpoint, hopefully not cutting my finger in the process. All right, I have just the string. I squeezed it, and it didn't cut. <laughs> Try again. Uh, do I have the pliers or the cutter? This is the cutter, but it didn't cut. All right, it cut. I don't know. I don't know why my first attempt didn't cut, but the second one did. I think I only need one cut, so I'm going to put the cutter away. Uh, it's actually called a clipper. I don't know what cutter. Where did I come up with that? Cutter is a boat. Clipper is uh, what I was just using. All right. Now, let's continue stringing this up. I'm just gonna go through it again in the back here, tie it up. I probably should clip those, but let me make sure it's working first. Uh, all right, so two ends of string tied at the back. Next, strings go through these grooves. Next, they go down here and go through the right side of each. So let's just do them one at a time here. All right, there's the groove. Uh, now I need to get it into the right side. Wait, right side? Yeah, right, right side, right. The right side of the right pairing. The right hole of the right pairing. And the second string will go through the right hole of the left pairing. Is that through? Did I get that? No, I didn't get that. I think I need to take off my glasses and use the needle nose pliers. Take off my glasses to see, use the needle nose pliers to direct because 
I can't seem to get this. All right, I got it. All right. Where the hell is it built? That is way off. Okay. Looks good, I think, for the moment. All right, should I string them both or should I feed this one through the next part? I think I should feed it through the next part. Just deal with them one at a time because you know what? If I if I deal with the second one, I'm gonna end up pulling this one out probably. And I'm just reading where it goes. It goes through the tuning gear. Um, I feel like I have to read the whole thing to progress. I didn't feel that way when I was doing the wood, but I feel that way about the stringing. I don't know. Maybe it's paranoia. Uh, like I'm trying to find out where does it, does it ever go back through this hole? Like why are there two holes if it never goes back through it? Yeah. Never goes back through it. Um, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I got it in the wrong hole because when I look at it from another angle, it's the two middle holes. You know what? I don't think it even matters which two holes. Let me just go back and see where they, which ones they said to use. They said to use the two rightmost, right? But then when you go on the next page and you look at them on this page in page 42, section 14, now it shows them at the two middle holes. How is that? There's no graphic where it shows me pulling the wire back out, but yet somehow they go in from the two rightmost holes and then later on the next page, without them ever being pulled back out, now they're on the two innermost holes. But here's an important point. They're only through two holes. So two holes used, two holes not. So I'm gonna interpret the fact that two holes get used and two holes don't, one from each pairing. And the fact that they show different holes used in different drawings, I'm going to say, pick the one that lines up with the destination, which in this case, I would say is the other hole, the inner hole. I'm going to line it up with where it's going to attach to the tuning knob. So I'm going to pick the hole that's in line with the tuning knob. Does that make sense? Is that the smartest thing to do? I couldn't tell you. That's what I've chosen to do. Okay. I feel better having made a decision. Whether it's the most brilliant decision or not, I don't know, but I made a decision and I know why I made it. And that's a lot of, <laughs> life works like that. You have to have some reason why you're doing what you're doing. And then, you know, on the next pass, maybe you'll get a chance to improve it. But you start off with making the decision yourself and knowing why you're making it. And then you can operate from there. If you just like a weather vane, you're never going to get anything done. All right. So, just taking a moment to study this. Uh, it would help if I was on the right page. Trying to understand the angle that I'm looking at it from. I think I'm looking at it from the reverse angle because I see the curve. So it goes through the far end first, and then it comes back on the close end. All right, how am I gonna do that? Am I gonna spin the wheel around? Like, I don't know how I'm gonna get it back. I, I can put it through there. In fact, I already have. I don't know how I'm gonna get it back. And I don't know how I'm going to tie it after I get it back. But I'll figure it out. It's 
coming, it's sneaking through gears. That's why I haven't been able to grab it. It's like turning sideways and snaking its way through the headstock. I tell you, this is, uh, this, <laughs> it shouldn't be like this, but it's challenging. This uh, stringing is uh, so far the most difficult part. I got an idea. What if I push it through and then I turn the gear so that it brings it back to me? Well, that's the one that's missing the, uh, yeah, that's the one that's missing. It's actually still in there, the gear. I gotta poke it out of there, otherwise it's gonna cause problems. It might even be already causing problems. So the gear that broke is still in there. All right, now it's out. Yesterday, in an effort to get this tuning knob to stay in, we somehow squashed the gear. And I think it was jamming this up. Yeah, now it moves. So that was kind of an issue. All right, there it is. So that was the answer. Put it partially through and then turn it so that it comes back to you. And now I could put it through further and turn it again. Can I kind of... I actually don't think I want to do this. I think I want to, uh, I want to have it kind of just at the edge so that I can tie it down, but I'm doing this just to, just to get it through and to grab hold of it. And then I'll pull it back the other way. All right. So pull the gear again. Now, which is the one that I'm looking for? It should be the one on this side, right? There it is, that's the one. All right, so it's on there. And really, it could be pretty good on there, but I'm gonna pull it back a little bit so that I then could tighten it which seems like, well, why not just cut it? But anyway, I feel like that's the right thing to do. So I'm gonna pull it back, tie it, and then I'm gonna turn the knob to tighten it. All right, I think that's enough. All right, so how did we do this knot yesterday? It was like we probably, fishermen know exactly what to do here. I don't, I think it was like, wrap around three times and then loop from the top to the bottom, something like that. All right, I don't think I did it correct, but I did something. And it should be good enough. All it's gotta do is just stay in there. Fun, make their guitars strings very uh, loose at the end. So I think it's not gonna be a problem. All right, now can we tighten this up? Are we tuning the hurdy-gurdy? Well, we're stringing it at least.
doesn't feel tight at all, but maybe I just need to keep turning it. I mean, there's like visibly slack in it. Very loose, but. Are there gonna be instructions for tuning this? Or am I just supposed to guess? Well, when I get to the musical notes and it shows which buttons are which, I should be able to figure it out. So I don't know if that's, you know, I mean, obviously that's loose, but um, I don't know where I'm supposed to stop. But at least we're at the point where we can tune it. Now, how it gets tuned, I haven't figured that out yet. But we'll figure it out. Okay. So we want to pick the hole that lines up with the second hole. And I'm going to say that's the, the one closer to me. Could be different on your build. So basically, they just give you two holes so you can uh, find the one that, that looks like it's going to work best for your build. In my case, it's the one closer to the outside. My stream breaking? No, it seems to still be going. All right. At least this side, the tuning knob works. Yep, it works like a charm. I'm just not sure which way it's, yeah, that's the correct way. I think that's the correct way. All right. Pretty cool that when the tuning knob works, you feel like you're working an actual instrument. And you know what, even when I was doing that one with my fingers. It's not like I've never been in the position with a real guitar where I had to work with, uh, you know, pliers or my fingers or whatever. I mean, it happens. It's not that, it's not that unrealistic. All right, trying to get this to come through. I didn't leave as much slack as last time. All right, I got it. I think this is enough, right? Get this side through and then tie it up, tie it and tune it. it keeps coming back out. Maybe one more half turn, get a better angle. Yep, that'll do it. All right, now I gotta grab that. got it I actually got it but it's on the wrong end so I'm gonna tur keep turning it get it to the back to the top hopefully there it is now time to tie it I'm not gonna do that fisherman knot I'm just gonna tie whatever the hell I do <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do I mean, this is like fishing line. So, yes, a fishing knot will work, a lure knot, a rope knot, but I also think almost anything will work. Well, it's seeming like there was way more pictures of this stringing up than there needed to be. Just making me wonder if I'm missing something here. There's like a ton of extra string. Definitely feeling like I'm missing something. The 
string doesn't have any texture, as I've mentioned several times. It just looks like fishing line. Would be nice if the string was a little better, but then the thing would cost $20 more. Are they like those nylon strings, basically? Rather than those brass or whatever those other ones are. Also, this tuning knob is like clearly fancier than it needs to be. Like this one's got like, I didn't break the gear on this one, so it's like three gears. I mean, clearly they're just doing that for fun. They didn't need to do three gears on the tuning knob. They just chose to do three gears on the tuning knob. Just do it. Let me just turn it sideways so you can see it as it's happening. Um, you see all those gears in the headstock? <laughs> turning away. I don't even know if that's efficient, but it's clearly just for fun. I mean, you could just have, you could just go right around this knob. You don't need any gears. <laughs> but we have like Rube Goldberg machine going here with all these gears. Oh, by the way, remember that caution? Like, don't hook it over this piece. I had, it was hooked over that piece. So I, I have to go through all those cautions when I think I'm done. Does it go in here or not? I think it doesn't. That's why that, all those cautions are there. Like, don't hook the wire on this. Don't hook it on that. Hmm. This wire is like... I feel like it wants to be hooked on this thing. But that's incorrect, as I understand. It does show to turn this down. Like, why, though? Does it go below the string or above the string? Hmm. Why is this piece even here? Does it have anything to do with this string? Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. So they want you to like turn this down to make this tight. And then to flip this back up to make this one higher. Is that so the buttons don't hit it? Yeah, it's now lifted off. supposed to create music. Do they really want us to rub that, uh, that weird piece? That like weird cube? I don't know what this cube is, but they really want it to be rubbed against that wheel. Thank you. 
What is this thing? Am I applying something to this wheel or am I like sharpening it? I feel like I'm sharpening this cube. All right, I don't know what I did, but I did it. All right. Also don't know how tight to make these. It doesn't say. I mean, they're definitely loose. Um, so let's keep tightening them. Is that too tight? think if I tighten them too much. They have little, you see that? Little things that catch. So I think I'm supposed to sand them down with that thing that I'm adding. This is definitely some pieces that stick out. I don't know if I'm applying something to smooth them or if I'm sanding the wood, but it clearly needs to be done. Yeah, that part is very much needs to be done. Another way to look at it, these ridges pluck the strings. The instructions actually show them taking this wheel out and sanding it. Does that wheel come out? I don't think it comes out. But Maybe it's just kind of telling you to sand it. So am I supposed to sand it? Yeah, I sand it first and then I put this on second. All right, let me get out the sandpaper. Even though I was already putting on that cube, you know, better late than never with this sandpaper. that it's like catching the strings can't have that
back to this thing. Don't even know what it is. Does anyone know? Can someone say in the comments? What is this cube? What the hell is it for? I think it's just something maybe to protect the strings. But what is it? I don't know, it smells like something. Like wood. Wait, am I just smelling the wood through it? Is it sap? These instructions have no words. They're just pictures, like same as Lego instructions. Do I turn it at? All right. Oh, open string. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So they're not even real notes. They're just like... Seems like they only touch the first string. They also seem to be not very loud. trying to memorize it. You heard something, right? I'm not sure how to turn it and, and get to these keys at the same time. I haven't yet figured out how to hold it, but let me just try one more time. Why am I only hearing the wheel and not the strings? I'm here. I'm not hearing the strings. I'm hearing like the crank louder than I'm hearing the strings, and that's kind of annoying me. Uh, will it get louder if I make it tighter? And what the hell does the second string do? And how do we get the second string in tune with the first string? Like an octave lower or something? Oh, you know what? The second string is not even in contact with anything. 
I'm not sure what the second string even does. It's not in contact with the wheel. And it's not in contact with the keys. Uh, I think it's more all about the first string here. See if it gets louder if I make it tighter. All I'm hearing is the, the wood scraping. thing and it doesn't sound good what's the problem why is the wood so loud and the uh, string so soft let me double check if I got everything correct here Wants this thing higher, but what's that gonna do? All right, let's focus on this string. I feel like I'd rather pluck it than crank it, but we gotta we gotta, we gotta play by the rules. There's a QWERTY code, QR code here to play and to tune by. Let me just Google search hurdy gurdy tuning. U gears hurdy gurdy tuning. How to tune U gears hurdy gurdy. All right, what is the hurdy gurdy? What notes? What is hurdy gurdy? U gears hurdy gurdy. Tangent box, crank handle. Can you play? Tuning. Tuning. You know, the professionals doesn't sound much better. You know, the professionals doesn't sound much better. All right. I could go downstairs and get the guitar tuner, but I'm just going to play it out of tune. <laughs> I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm just going to get through that first song, no matter how bad it sounds. All right, Ode to Joy, just this first line here. We should be able to do that. Game stopped. Don't Is worry, it I up? press reconnect. I press reconnect. How, for how long was it off? I don't know. Why would it go off right during the most dramatic moment when I'm playing it? All right, Nick, you... All right, Nick, you, you play it. Uh, I'll show you. It's very simple. All right. You see these buttons? Yeah. They, they go, Nick, Nick, look at the buttons while I show you. This is button one, this is button two, three, four, five, six. No button is zero. If you don't press no button, it's zero. Each crank is a full note. A half crank is a half note. So you can play this Ode to Joy. I don't have six fingers. Uh, you can move your fingers. Okay. Okay. 
How do you crank this thing? Um, clockwise. Oh, that's the other thing. You gotta pick it up. Or, you know what? You can put the crank a little bit off the table. You know what? I went on the like pro website of the people who made this, and theirs didn't sound much better. <laughs> By the way, this was apparently a Kickstarter project at one point, which is pretty cool when you think about it. Is it, it. possible maybe you have to hold it like this? I, that's how I was doing it. I think another way to do it, Nick, another idea, I think, put it off the table. See, now you can crank it. I only have to like hold it like this, like an alien. Yeah. That means nothing is supposed to hold it like this. That's how I would. That's how I was doing it. Yeah. No, you put it back on the table. Now it's not going to crank. It needs the crank needs to be off the table. Oh. I don't know why they made the crank bigger than the instrument. Hold up. It's like messing with my brain. I think you need to hold it like this, Nick, under the, like under the. That's how a guitar player would hold yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Oh, this works. Yeah. I, just do it, yeah. I was trying to do it, like, on camera, but just do it off camera. People will still No, no, I, I, can't, I can't crank it like this. Uh, how You want to try, I'll do the buttons, you do the crank? I want to do it like just to hold it down. Okay, okay. I got an idea. Just do, just do the cranking, one second per crank, I'll do the notes. Okay. There's actually, I don't know how to read notes, but these ones are connected and these aren't at the start. So. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Um, it's like, I'm not sure what it means either. I forget at the moment. But anyway, you just played a hurdy-gurdy. Congratulations. All right, yeah, we did it. Yeah, good job. Nice cool hurdy-gurdy you got here. Yeah. All right. Um... Uh, there's a medieval rock song here. Should we attempt that before we end the stream? All right. All right, let's see if we can do that. Well, we weren't... We were on Ode to Joy. I was actually Bronley Dessa Boots. No, no, I was doing the, the notes from Ode to Joy. Oh, okay. You want to try Bronley Dessa Boots? Yeah, that's what that's what I was doing. Okay. I, I, I read it wrong. I just went straight from there. All right. Wow, this one's much tougher. <laughs> I'm not going to do this one right now. Uh, I couldn't do anything but the Ode to Joy. Uh, with a little practice, maybe. Maybe I'll show off tomorrow's stream. I'll start by playing the hurdy-gurdy for five minutes. But for now, I think that's the best I can do. Okay. All right, good night. Come back tomorrow, see more. We'll hear more.